Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ala ba'd It's imperative for us to know the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it is equally important for us to know the position of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Islam that we understand Islam and that Islam and the sunnah are the same and I wanted to just relate one of the statements of the Salaf al-Saleh, a fourth century scholar known as Imam Barbahari rahimahullah ta'ala, who was a Hanbali scholar, meaning that he adhered to the Hanbali jurisprudence in, in fiqh and understanding uh, jurisprudence. And he adhered to the Aqidah of the four Imams, which was the Aqidah of the Salaf al-Saleh, the Aqeedah of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een the Aqeedah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Imam Barbahari said rahimahullah ta'ala he said i'lum o i'lamu anna l-islama huwa sunnah wa sunnatu hiya l-islam wa la yukum ahaduhuma illa bil-akhir Imam Barbahari rahimahullah ta'ala said know that Islam is the sunnah and that the sunnah is Islam and that one of them is not independent of the other. So the Sunnah and Islam, they depend on one another because the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explains the Quran. And an integral in part, uh, in, uh, part of how we understand Islam is through the Sunnah, the actions, the sayings, the statements, the manners, the belief of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we don't have Islam without the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah so there is no such thing as a Muslim who says although some people consider themselves Muslim and say yes I follow the Quran but I don't follow the Sunnah that's absolutely preposterous ludicrous and ridiculous why do I say that? because as Imam Barbahari said and as the Salaf al -Sali illustrated for us that Islam and the Sunnah are one that you can't have one without the other Shaykh Rabi bin Hadi al Madhali, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, uh, ta he said in explaining this beautiful statement of Imam Barbahari, the Shaykh said, Fuhu Rahimahullah, Yunabbi ala makana to Sunnah. Fa inna al Islama huwa da'wat al NBA jami'an. Qala Ta'ala, inna dina inda Allahi al Islam. So the Shaykh began by explaining this statement of Imam Barbahari rahimahullah ta'ala by saying that so may Allah have mercy upon Imam Barbahari. He said here in this statement he is pointing out the fact that the the makan or the status of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that Islam is the da'wah or the propagation or the call of the enbiya all of them meaning all of the messengers all of the prophets they call to the same thing as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says well, laqad ba'athna fi kulli ummatin rasulan in na'budullah which tanibu ta'bud Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says in the Quran that we've sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah and stay away from the ta'bud stay, stay away from those things uh, worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so going back to the statement of uh, Shaykh Rabi uh, Ta'ala, he said then he, he, he mentioned the verse, he said Qala Ta'ala and the Almighty said verily the religion that is uh, accepted by, by Allah is Islam the religion that's accepted by Allah is Islam and then he mentioned another ayah he says Waqala Ta'ala وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Then the Shaykh went on to say and mentioned another uh, verse from the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty says And whoever desires other than Islam a, a, as a religion then it is not accepted from him and in the hereafter he is one of the losers. Then the Shaykh went on to say, Was Sunnatu he a tariq a nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa minhajahu wa akhlaqahu. 
فمن لم يأتي بهذه السنة فهو مبتدع ضال The Shaykh went on to say that the sunnah or the path it is the path of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam it is his methodology it is his manners so whoever does not uh, come with the sunnah or adhere to the sunnah then he is an innovator meaning he innovates in the religion of Islam he distorts the principles of the in, uh, the religion of Islam as we see the Ashaira, we see the Mu'tazila, we see the Jahmiya, we see all these groups of innovation of Khwana Muslimin, Jama'at Tabliq, all of these groups and sects, the Shia in their various forms, they all deviate to a greater or lesser extent, some more than others, some actually leave the fold of Islam through their innovation. The, so the Shaykh said in this, uh, he said after that, he said, so the person who does not adhere to the sunnah then he is an innovator and misguided then the shaykh said hafizullah ta'ala lam yati bil islam and he does not uh, come with islam wa qad yakun kathir mimma yatamidu hadhihi mukhalifa kafirin o munafiqin na'udhu billah min kulli dhalik the shaykh went on to say he said, and it is possible that many from of those who willfully uh, differ with the sunnah, that they are disbelievers, or that they have become hypocrites, and we seek Allah, we seek refuge in Allah from all of that. So meaning, as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned, he said, Al-Ma'asi barid al-Kufr. He said that sinfulness is the means to disbelief. So the more and more we commit sin, it is we're getting closer where our iman is lessening and we're getting cl closer to the path of no iman. And no iman means what? means disbelief. So that that is one of the ways in which a person gets closer to disbelief is by continuing in sin continuing in sin doesn't make them a disbeliever but it's a means to disbelief and likewise as the Salaf used to say that the person of innovation and misguidance the person who diverts from the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam who distorts the principles of Islam that those people are less likely to make uh, toba or repentance to Allah than the person who is a person of sin. Why is this the case? Because a person of sin, it, uh, they realize their mistakes. When a person drinks alcohol, when a person looks at uh, things that are prohibited, when a person does something sinful, they feel shame mostly. Most of the time, as a Muslim, they feel shame. Because they feel, man, I, I, I need to get rid of the sin. I need to get rid of this alcohol. I need to quit smoking weed. I need to quit doing whatever I'm doing. They feel sin. But a person of innovation, they believe they're coming closer to Allah. So, for example, when you have the people like the, the Ahbash, that those people believe they're coming closer to Allah when they consider other Muslims to be in, uh, uh, not just innovators, but they make takfir of Ibn Taymiyyah. They say he's not a he's not a Muslim. They make takfir of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. They say he's not a Muslim. Although these these great uh, mountains of knowledge were known as Shaykh al Islam. This is the laqab. This is the title that they're given by those people who follow Kitab Allah wa Sunnat al Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam after them. So we see that those people who distort the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa taala, they're not they're not. Uh, following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because their statements contradict that of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless those people who are innovating in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's deen to make tawbah and may Allah expose those people who want to cause uh, distortion in the religion of Islam who willingly do it 
And those people who unwillingly do it, may Allah make them known to us. And may Allah protect the ummah of in, from innovators and protect the ummah from hypocrites and protect the ummah from any kind of wickedness that's in the earth. And I ask Allah to Baraka Ta'ala by all his names and attributes to forgive us of our sins and bless us with the Sirat al-Mustaqeem and bless us to be in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala forgive our scholars and bless our scholars and bless them to continue in the path of leadership for us and showing us how to understand the text how to understand the Kitabullah Wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ala Nabiya Muhammad